Hi everybody and welcome to my video of the mermaid and the dolphin. Looks like they're having a bit of a party here so um, perhaps that's what's going on. I'm, I, I sketched the mermaid and I sketched the dolphin and then I realised they made this beautiful heart shape so I drew a heart around them. <laughs> and what I'm doing now is just painting in the sea behind the heart, behind their lovely little heart cocoon. So I'm just using a blue and a turquoise colour mixed together paint that. I've added a little bit of um, ultramarine blue here on my fan brush. I was painting some wavy type motions in the background there just to give the idea it's the sea really. So now I'm just adding a bit of titanium white to that light um, tealy colour. I'm doing exactly the same thing just giving the rough idea with a fan brush that there's some waves happening around their lovely little cocoon. So I'm just drying that off now because I don't want it to run when I'm when I start to do the heart. I want to know it's perfectly dry and I can move ahead with my metallic blue and paint the entire heart. I know I've got my sketch of my mermaid and dolphin there but actually even after two coats you can still see enough of the sketch to you know not make it difficult to draw on top it's actually using up quite a lot of metallic paint this i'm surprised how much it it took to do it but you can see there it's really shiny so i'm going to dry that first coat off but i think in order to get it even it needs another coat on top so i'll just pop that in i did decide to leave a white line around the heart so I could readily see where where the edges were. I'm not so sure that was a good idea really, but um, it did allow me to see where the heart ended because looking head down on it, it wasn't that easy to spot. So I'm just putting my sketch in again with a white pastel pencil actually, just enough so I can see to paint it. That's the dolphin, just popping the mermaid in. I had to sort of twist her around slightly to get the tails to meet. But I, I, I think it, I was going to say, I think it looks realistic. I mean, it's a mermaid. So, you know, <laughs> there's nothing much realistic here. But there they are. They're sketched in. I can see them. And I'm using two different purples, pur dark purple and light purple. Start with a dolphin here and just paint him in. There really isn't anything complicated or difficult about this. It's just the two shades of, of purple. I've put some white out as well because um, I think I might need some for the top of his fins, etc. But you can see all I'm doing is sort of sweeping the purples down his body. It's, uh, anyone can do this really. It's quite straightforward. Put his little bottle nose in. I'm leaving a space for his eye. Just lighten up that midsection there. There we are. So dry him off and we'll pop his eye in and he'll be able to see where he's going. You must make sure that your acrylic is absolutely perfectly dry before you go in with a fine liner or anything. I'm actually using Posca to start with there but then I changed to a fine liner and if you don't make sure your acrylic's dry you'll wreck your fine liner. So I'm just starting on the skin tone now of the mermaid and I'm using a, a cheap, um, it's a De La Roni Simply range uh, and it's called Portrait Pink and it's the perfect, perfect colour but because it's quite a cheap paint it really is struggling on this metallic uh, paint to cover it. Mind you most things as I discovered struggled to cover the metallic paint. It was so smooth. I couldn't get any tooth. I think possibly 
a coat of transparent gesso might have helped because there just was no tooth to be had at all. So I think that's the second coat I gave her, maybe third, I don't know. Um, and it, it still wasn't perfect, to be honest. Nagon decided to go back over it again. Give it a third coat. And I think at the, by this stage, you know, we've got the idea it's all right. It's, uh, it's as good as it's going to get on the metallic. So now I'm deciding just to shade the uh, to skin tones, shade her skin tones. And I've decided just to use a, a crayon in a sort of light brown colour. So I'm shading the top there under where her hair's going to cast a shadow and, you know, where her clothes are, tummy, etc. Little tummy button. Don't forget a tummy button. And now... I'm looking at my Poscas, I'm looking at my crayons. What am I going to get to do this job in? Um, I'm just drawing the features in there with pe pencil. Putting her lips in with Posca and the features in with a fine liner. Dry all that off. Get my little light blue Posca, give her some eye colour. Features on her face, little rosy cheeks with a crayon. some highlights on her face just to make it make it look um, realistic on our realistic mermaid <laughs> I've just been searching my Poscas for her hair and the Poscas actually drew very nicely on the metallic paint um, they were one of the things that did actually work so that's that in. I'm just getting a crayon and and colouring the hair in. You can still see the poscas through it, so it looks um, looks very pretty. Just putting a bit of white up there. That's normally where the light catches. Okay, so. I've got my ink tense um, box out now. I'm looking through my ink tenses to find a colour that I want to do her um, tail and a little bodice in, um, which I've decided is sort of magenta colour. So I'm just laying some pigment down from the ink tens using my water pen, and mm, it's not great, although it has laid some pigment down. I'm now using my um, ink tens blocks to leave more pigment down and you can see it, it definitely is laying pigment down but it is struggling with that uh, metallic paint but it's it's a nice a nice backdrop you know it's a nice background color but i don't think i'm going to be successful in getting her to be really vibrant with ink tenses i haven't given up yet i'm still trying and that's a very light coloured white sort of um, ink tense just to see if that would work. And yeah, you know what I mean? It's There's something there, definitely, but it's not as vibrant as I would like it to be. So let's have a think. What can we use? <laughs> I've got my crayons out. Is that going to work? Mm, no. Put them wet. So, I've got my Albrecht Dura water crayon, water soluble crayons out now, and no, that's not working either. <laughs> so I've decided the way forward is Jane Davenport velvet pastels, and yes, they definitely work. They're laying down some lovely pigment, and I'm beginning to get that magenta colour that I really, really want. You can see how shiny that is. It's lovely. So I've just done a little bit more of the Jane Davenport Velvet Pastel. And yeah, that's that's given me what I want. That's just a, a straightforward paintbrush, got nothing on it. I'm just moving the Velvet Pastel around. 
on the page. A bit more of the tail. Yeah. Oh, it's looking lovely now. Yeah, I like that. It's looking really nice. So I'm just, I just wanted to check that this was exactly what I what I wanted, and it's hard to do that when the outside of the heart hasn't been drawn in. So I'm going around it with a fine liner. Everything's dry now, so I can use my fine liner. And I'm putting in quite a scribbly line all the way around it. I don't like just a solid line. It's it's great if you're perfect with it, but if you're not, it looks terrible. And I quite like this arty sort of line, this a scribbly line. It gives a much more arty appearance to it. So I'm just going to go around her bodice. Um, I'm going to do the scales on a tail. Just be careful when you're doing this. It's very easy to, as you move further down, you get off the square and they start coming out all wonky or they start being much smaller. So keep checking that you've got, that you're doing it right. It, it's worth just taking your time and getting these scales put in right because they're quite an important part of the whole thing after all. Just a few more there above her tail. And then I'm just putting some lines in her tail, like fishy sort of lines like that. And I'm going all the way around her with a sort of scribbly kind of line. Round her face. And a dolphin. Just around everywhere that's finished now, I'm giving this scribbly sort of uh, outline to. Not a hair, that's fine as it is. Um, but you see now that last line there of the dolphin was really quite scribbly. So I've decided to add some shiny stars and a treasure chest. We are under the water after all. And reality has been suspended. Um, so I've sketched out a, a treasure chest, which happened to be too large. So I scanned it in, shrunk it down, printed it out on some uh, watercolour paper. I've got... I've got just about every crayon I own out here. These are Albrecht Dürer uh, watercolour crayons. I'm just testing them out there to see which colours I like for what. Just spreading the pigment out. Um, they're very nice crayons, these, actually. And then with my water brush to uh, di you know spread the pigment around, activate it. Yay, it's beginning to look like a chest. So there we are, I'm just using different shades for different regions. Dry it off because I want to use my fine liner. Just going around the edge as I normally do with things. Yeah, I'm getting there. It's got a planked and it's got some a big handle at the side look which I've just made up uh, and then I decided to get my ruler out so these ones would be square <laughs> and as you can see when I'm drawing them they're nothing like square but fortunately for me I like uh, squiggly lines so I just went over them and made them made them the right dimensions and the angle and there's my strapping down there yeah that's looking all right that's looking like a little chest. Let's put a colour in the centre, just in case any of it's visible. And just a little bit of detail with a fine liner there, just to finish it off. So that's where that's going to go. Yeah, lovely. Uh, I found some shelves in a in some old jewellery that we had. I don't know why, but we had it. And I also found this. Um, well, I don't know what it is. It was just a length of very, very cheap and nasty light coins on a sort of plastic chain. So I thought they'd be absolutely perfect for my treasure chest. So I chopped the the coins, the coin part off, used this ultra tacky glue stuff and stuck them on like they're coming out of my treasure chest. Just use pliers to, or snips or whatever they are, to... Um, Cut the coins out. 
and you can see that there's I'm just building them up with this tacky glue it did feel strange that tacky glue because it didn't sort of stick straight away but it you know in time it did actually do a very good job and it dries clear which is a good thing because I was a little bit um, excited <laughs> about how much glue I was using there um, but it, it all dry it all dried it all stuck and it all dried clear which is perfect me starting to put my coins in they were actually all silver but um, I sprayed some of them with a gold paint just so as we've got silver and gold going on together just for added interest I think it does make a difference actually I was really I really didn't know whether these were going to stick actually because they're all at odd angles but I did use excessive amounts of glue as you can see um, and yeah I mean they stuck absolutely fantastically so that's Aileen's tacky stuff or something I think it's called um, I got it from yeah Aileen's original tacky glue uh, and it worked it's brilliant loved it can't speak highly enough of it you can see how much I've got there but you know dried perfectly so we're moving on we're going to put these little stars inside this they're really they're plastic obviously but they really glisten and I'm going to spread them around inside that heart just to make the inner inside the heart just a bit more partified and special so get them all stuck down and same glue that Aileen's super tacky glue I keep showing you my box of Posca's don't I like, you know where would I be without my Poscas? I do not know. So I'm just using a pastel pencil. I'm drawing the outlines of some fish. Uh, obviously, you know, fish live in the sea. You can't have the sea without fish. So I've got two different kinds. I've got the yellow brand fish <laughs> and the peachy coloured brand fish. I have no idea what they are, but you know, the vaguely fish shaped. I'm colouring one in, as I say, in yellow with my Posca. Tried the small one, I'd be there all day. So I moved on to the bigger one. Just, you know, roughly colouring them in, really. Moving on to a peachy coloured one for this side. I don't know if you get fish in this colour. Doesn't matter, the whole thing's a fantasy. Just making sure that they're filled in. And then, oh, don't forget the tummy button. <laughs> then I'm going to dry them off. The Posca actually doesn't take long to dry at all. But, you know, as I've warned you and warned you, please make sure it's dry before you go in with a fine liner because that will be the end of your fine liner otherwise. So I'm putting the faces in um, and then just going all the way around with my fine liner, with my scribbly line. And it makes them stand out and they look really nice. Same thing over the other side with the peach fish <laughs> they could be peach fish I could have made them stripy I could have, I could have done anything to them but I thought there was quite enough going on on that page as it was just putting some little air bubbles in I don't think fish emit air bubbles but I quite like the idea of putting them on so so I did I'm just putting some with my thick white Posca just some additional idea that this is under the sea um, I've decided to use the light blue Posca under it no I didn't like that get the dark blue Posca out I've signed it now but never mind I'm still cracking on um, just putting dark blue Posca under that white it's difficult to see actually but it does make a slight difference so there we are our lovely romantic mermaid and dolphin having a lovely fun time <laughs> 